So we'll post it, we'll make it available. Um, okay, who else? Uh, Vicki Cummings. So I see Vicki's uh, face. I'm get, I keep getting an emergency alert. Do you get that? Are you getting that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're not just worry about me. There were, it's no, a, it's they're just more, warning people about who are returning about self-isolating. Yes, and I think we're all here. So, um, so uh, uh, there she is. There's Vicky. Vicky, and, and um, Vicky is our uh, director of strategic partnerships. So great to have Vicky. And let's see, is there anybody else on our team here? Jennifer, I think that's all we have today right now. So. Um, but that's the team that's been working on this. Um, our, our procedure for the for the um, afternoon is uh, we'll we'll try to keep it to an hour and a half, an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and um, we have a series of questions that uh, that that we hope will guide the conversation. Um, and uh, but I'm going to turn it over first to Jennifer, who's going to talk us through, make sure we're all comfortable with the technology we're using right now. Jennifer. Thank you, Larry. Uh, yes, most of you are probably familiar with Zoom, perhaps you're not, so I'll, I'll go through it a little bit here. Um, so first off, there are many people who have said they just wanna listen in, and that's totally fine. Um, if you want to just listen in and not uh, contribute to the conversation, just uh, make sure that your um, video is off. So anyone who has video on, I will call on you and, uh, well, just at the beginning, otherwise you'll just be raising your hand. Um, and, uh, and if you are unable to um, at, put video on and you still wanna take part, uh, just message me or you can also raise your hand. It seems like people have been able to do that even if they don't have video. So, um, and speaking of raising your hand, you may be wondering what I'm talking about. If you go down at the bottom, there's a, there's a menu and it's, there's one that says participants. So if you open that, the menu will come up on the right hand side of your screen. And on there, you'll see an option for raising your hand. So that's what I mean by raising your hand virtually. Uh, some people haven't been able to do that. So they can just wave down if they want to if they want to say something. Um, also, if you, there's also a chat option. So if you uh, pull that up, um, you are able to kind of comment on what something say, someone is saying if you don't want to kind of jump in. Uh, a lot of people have been putting links in the chat as we're talking about things, the resources that they're referring to. And also you can message somebody directly through the chat. So for instance, if you want to ask somebody for their uh, email address, you want to follow up with them later, you can ask them directly through the chat and uh, or privately or just give them a private uh, comment you're able to do that as well um, <clears throat> through I'm going to don't be offended if I mute you it's best if everybody else is muted other than the person who's talking um, but as your as you can either unmute yourself or I will unmute you if you uh, if you want to talk or if you have your hand raised also throughout the conversation, I will be launching a couple of polls. I'll be launching a total of three polls. And um, that's just so that we can collect a little bit of additional quantitative data for our reports. And, um, and just to let you know, these polls are completely confidential. So I have no way of knowing who has hit what. So uh, please do feel free to uh, take part in those polls. And uh, now, so uh, what we'll do is we'll just go around the room and uh, if you could say your name, your title, the, uh, the organization that you work with, if applicable, if not, you know, if you're just, if you're an artist educator independent, that's let us know. Also, uh, basically about one sentence about how the current uh, measures have been affecting you just in this, in this short amount of time that we've been dealing with them so far. So, um, we will get started with uh, Amy Bouchard. Hi everyone, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, yeah, I'm Amy and I work at Young People's Theatre. I'm the community programs manager there. Uh, and obviously, you know, the rest of our season has been canceled. Uh, all of our school and community programming and access and inclusion initiatives are um, on hold, but um, you know, it doesn't seem likely they'll be starting back up. So. 
uh, that's a little bit about how we're affected right now. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, um, Akshata. Oh, sorry, you're, never mind, you don't have your video on, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> we'll go with Lippert Music. Hi, my name is Charlene Beard and I run Lippert Music in Toronto. We're a private music school offering private lessons on many, many different kinds of instruments. We work with about 35 teachers. We have about 400 students that we see each week in Toronto. And uh, the online, um, we've been giving online lessons since March the 13th. Um, having some great success with it. Our goal was to get to April 5th. So uh, we have some lessons that are to be made up. Um, and then we have, we're just doing our numbers right now, but our numbers will be falling as of the end of March. Uh, we have probably about 30 to 50 students that will be discontinuing that we know of currently. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, <clears throat> Okay, Akshata is now now has video on, so please go ahead. Hello, hi everyone. Um, I'm the programs and gallery manager at Arts at Tobico, and for sure these are the challenging times that we're dealing with. We do run a lot of after school uh, programs for kids um, age nine to fourteen, adults classes and seniors classes as well. Um, so as soon as the school kind of uh, came to a halt, all of our programs um, stopped as well, especially the after school. But uh, just yesterday, we launched um, a whole lot of a range of um, art um, classes online on our website. Um, and some of them are on Zoom. Some of them are just on Instagram Live that we're doing virtual um, studio tours with artists and our whole agenda and priority at this point is to serve the seniors who are uh, the most vulnerable and in isolation and is very difficult for them. And we're running a special series for them, uh, creating arts uh, for, uh, for seniors, um, an online series, and um, also doing um, different art programs just to be able to support and be able to pay artists at this very time. Great, thank you. Uh, Diane. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I am cultural coordinator for the town of Oakville and uh, we have an exhibition program um, at the cultural center. We also have a myriad of uh, programs and classes, camps that we offer to all ages of um, the community. Um, and on top of that, we have a school visit program. Our center has dedicated specialized studios, a clay studio, a wood shop, uh, painting, recording, uh, music recording, a media lab, fiber arts, um, that kind of thing. So right now, the center is closed. We have um, obviously no members or um, clients or patrons coming to the center, and we're trying to figure out what we can do in order to um, connect virtually, um, keep people engaged, and then coming back when we eventually do open. We also have um, four kilometers of exhibition space in the corridors um, and a very a lovely uh, main gallery. So currently there's nothing in the gallery, but the corridors, we just hung all of this great work and we're trying to figure out how can we continue to promote that online as well. Um, because people are not coming in. They can't come in to take a look at it. So I'm here to get some ideas on what other organizations are doing. Great, thank you. Um, Helena. I'm uh, Helena Alto. I'm the Administrative Director of Canscape, which is the Canadian Society of Children's Authors, Illustrators, and Performers. We're a national membership-based organization, uh, and we offer professional development resources to our membership. And we have a conference our annual conference is scheduled for October and uh, any uh, luck the things will be on in place for October but we're also planning on contingencies for our conference we've offered our conference uh, additionally in it, uh, to it being in person we also offer uh, uh, via uh, recording uh, we call that uh, our virtual conference and so our live all of 
record all of our presenters and make that available. Okay, great, great. Your mic is a little bit low, but um, I think we most caught that for the most part. Um, and Jason. Uh, hey folks, I'm um, <clears throat> I'm Jason. I'm the um, I'm one of the creative directors at a group called Q here in Toronto, and I'm the managing director of uh, Carfac Ontario. So right now we're dealing with things on a couple of different ends. Um, so with Q, we're dealing with the fallout from this epidemic. With particularly, we focus on engaging marginalized and very vulnerable um, artists in the Toronto and folks facing multitude of systemic barriers. So some of those challenges can be certainly compounded right now that we're seeing. So we're trying to get out um, ahead of that. And uh, with Carfac Ontario, we're looking at how we can best create um, province-wide supports and advocacy and um, what we can be best be doing to support artists in a very timely and rapid response kind of way. Also looking at the medium and long-term uh, solutions for the fallout that will come. So. Um, I wanted to talk a bit with folks about that today and try to suss out a little bit what everyone's thinking and different directions that we might be going. Great, thank you, Jason. Uh, JJ. Um, hi, um, I'm Jessica Jang. I'm the education manager at Workman Arts, which is an arts organization that supports artists with lived experience of mental health and or addictions and recovery. And um, right now, uh, we were about to launch our spring semester of classes, which ranged in, ranges in like 22 different uh, classes of varying disciplines. And now I'm scrambling to just uh, to reroute things so that we can teach um, classes remotely. And so far, we've got 15 classes that we plan to run remotely from April 20th um, onwards into June. So um, just making that transition and also trying to find as many different support systems available um, for our membership who uh, are composed largely of artists uh, with different access needs um, and um, of course mental health needs as well. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Johnny? Hi, uh, my name is Johnny Soln. I am the curriculum chair of the arts at All Saints Catholic Secondary School. It is also a regional arts and media program and I'm the co-creator of the regional arts and media program. Um, presently, we're in our second year, so we're a brand new regional arts school. Um, and we are looking at how we can continue to support our students in developing their arts, particularly once the government moves past its April 6th date of this TV Ontario Learn From Home component. I'm also involved with a couple uh, local community theaters. I sit on the board of directors there. I'm involved with Oshawa Little Theater and our, uh, well, I used to sit on the board of the directors there and our season has just been canceled. So the board of directors is looking at ways of how we can postpone or keep the small theater alive in the future as well. Right, okay, thank you, Johnny. Uh, Rebecca. Hi there, my name is Rebecca Harrison. I'm the executive director of Unity Charity. Um, <clears throat> Unity Charity is a national uh, organization. We use hip hop art forms to help young people develop resilience. Um, all of our programming runs out of partner spaces, predominantly city run spaces and schools. So we are not running any programming <laughs> uh, right now. And like so many other people figuring out how to flip that online. Uh, and of course, I'm sure like so many other people as well, take in like daily news from funders, from the government. I'm on contingency plan number like 87 since Wednesday. <laughs> um, so yeah, really happy to be online with everybody here to, to commiserate and like high five and talk about what's going on. Great, thank you, Rebecca. Um, Sheena. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Um, I'm the Artistic Director of Kickstart Arts. Um, we're a not-for-profit that does arts and social justice related work. Um, both in schools and in community, we do a lot of work in Regent Park. Um, so like a lot of you, we're doing a lot of the same things around trying to scramble and figure out how on earth we put things online. Um, I'm particularly concerned about youth in Regent Park right now. I think they're particularly vulnerable as are other um, at-risk communities. 
um, because they don't have access really to computers and the internet in the same way that others might. Um, and I also do some work at OISE, um, teach the drama AQ there, uh, faculty advise there. Great, thank you, Sheena. Uh, Sheila. Hi, um, I am a high school uh, drama and English teacher with the Toronto Catholic District School Board. And um, I'm scrambling like many of you are to suddenly transition into uh, a distance learning environment. Um, I've lost contact with um, a lot of my students quite suddenly um, after scrambling on the Thursday before March break to quickly put together um, packages. Um, I'm using the D2L Brightspace platform to try to connect and quickly having to learn how to use Zoom. Um, but I teach in a part of the city where not um, every student necessarily has reliable access to Wi-Fi or um, they have um, difficulties paying the Wi-Fi bill. So there's some social justice issues around this new world that we're living in that concern me about um, how we can effectively help our students. Uh, and the NTS Drama Festival, which was often a way that we were um, we create the audiences of tomorrow uh, for our students, that has now um, been cancelled as well. So I'm here just to get a sense of community um, in another way. So. Great, thank you, Sheila. Um, Stephanie. Uh, hi everyone, uh, Stephanie Draker. I am the program manager with Working Culture. Um, Working Culture is a nonprofit arts service organization uh, with a focus on supporting the career development of people who work in the arts. Um, so we work with artists, we work with arts administrators, um, anyone who really would consider um, um, themselves as being employed within the arts with business skills training and uh, capacity building um, uh, skills training. Um, a number of our programs have been postponed at this point, not canceled, um, so we're in a bit of a better position right now, but I do echo a lot of the same challenges that folks have brought up. Um, so much of what we had on the go is now on hold, and a number of our projects have been deferred um, without uh, any kind of clear indication of when we might be able to start up again. Um, many of our projects emphasize in-person uh, convening. So we're also in a position right now where we're trying to shift to um, digital or virtual ways of delivering our content while trying to measure uh, the same type of impact that we would get through in-person connection um, and, and really just trying to see how else we might be able to um, support other folks who are kind of in that same realm. Um, we do have some limited experience with virtual training delivery through webinar and through um, the development and delivery of e-learning modules. Um, and it's, we've mostly done them on a, on a project basis. So now we're just trying to figure out how we might um, expand and extend some of those resources moving forward. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Um, Tanya. Hi, uh, my name is Tanya Dericio and I am the program supervisor for culture at the town of Oakville. So my colleague is Diane, who's also part of this conversation. Um, the town right now, is, the focus is um, essential services only. So um, all of us are working from home. Uh, we're in a wait and see status, um, waiting to see what will happen with the spring program. Um, we employ a lot of part-time artists as instructors in our facilities, and they will most likely, well, they're being paid right now until April 5th, and they will most likely go be laid off um, after that. Um, so we're right now trying to figure out how to provide outreach activities um, with very limited access on the social media platforms um, because the town corporately is using it for other reasons. Um, I'm also a practicing artist um, who's also part of the Redhead Collective in Toronto and um, we're in the, based in the 401 Richmond building, which has been closed. And uh, the collective right now is also trying to figure out um, what our status is for the rest of the programming year. I'm also part of an artist residency program called Alchemy. Um, we had a program ready to go with a whole bunch of artists from around the world um, that were going to attend our residency at the end of April at Gibraltar Point Artscape. 
and that has also been canceled. So um, just I'm here to hear how people are brainstorming and using different platforms to engage because engagement is still very, very important. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tanya. <clears throat> uh, Victoria. Hi. Uh, my name is Victoria Forsey. I work with the Canadian Children's Opera Company. I'm the choir manager. Um, we provide music and dramatic uh, training for young people ages three and up. Um, currently, our rehearsals and productions have been halted. Um, so we're trying to understand how to keep choristers as well as teaching artists engaged. Uh, we have started online Zoom meetings and perhaps not offering similar instruction in terms of uh, rehearsing for productions, um, but offering musical engagement uh, online learning classes so that our choristers can, we, we're um, understanding this is such a, a hard time for so many people and keeping music uh, in our kids' lives is very important to us. Um, and we're also understanding and trying to I guess manage with you know theaters being closed across the city across the country how does this affect our next season how does shifting a production into next season how will that affect morale how will that affect um you know the production team uh, so many people it's such a chain reaction um and then in terms of recruitment for next season of course so much is already done online but uh, because open houses and the chance for prospective choristers and parents to meet current members, we are trying to launch a campaign so that the virtual meetings and the, and the questions and uh, encouragement to, to join can still be done. Um, so I'm just here to understand how, you know, the, the scope of arts is being affected and uh, just hoping to gain some perspective in into how Toronto as uh, the GTA is uh, dealing with all this. Great, thank you, Victoria. Um, Catherine, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I'm also here to find out uh, what the, or first of all, my name is Catherine Lamberti. I'm a board member of the Community Folk Art Council of Toronto. Um, the Folk Art Council is an organization that's existed for the last 50 years. Uh, our major event is the Canada Day uh, Multicultural uh, Dance Festival at Young Dundas Square. Um, we're, of course, in a wait and see attitude because nobody knows what's going to happen on Canada Day. Uh, so I'm indeed very curious about what the rest of you are doing in the current situation and uh, thrilled about the possibility, and thank you for bringing us together, to brainstorm what can be done. Great. Thank you very much, Catherine. And that is everyone who is on video. Is there anybody I've missed um, or who would like to speak who's not, doesn't have their video enabled? I think we're good. Larry, did you want to continue on? Yes, okay, good. Well, thank you very much for sharing these uh, background pieces with us. Um, before we, and I do want to go into more of this brainstorming about what people are doing and how, or, or what ideas we have. Can I just ask before we go there though, um, you, I, I heard incredible professional attitudes about we're going to make things happen and how are we going to do it and uh, uh, you're very uh, task oriented. But can I ask, um, in terms of your own you know, the impact on you, what, uh, is it taking any kind of an emotional toll on you personally as you try to do what you can for your clients and your audiences and your students? Is there, is, is, is this, I mean, we're all in it and we all have our individual responses and we're all in our individual situations. But um, I'm just wondering how this is affecting you and how you're managing to take care of yourselves. And again, you can raise your hand uh, virtually in the, uh, in the participants tab. Okay, yes, Rebecca, thank you. Um. <clears throat> Um, I would say that I've definitely never been more grateful to have good mentors around me uh, and good relationships with peers. Um, it's also comforting that nobody seems to know <laughs> more than anybody else <laughs> about how to go about this the right way, which is positive. Um, I would say that 
mental health wise, the thing that has been the most challenging for me this week is definitely feeling like being at that crossroads where as executive director anyway, having like a, a greater obligation to the well-being of the organization and the youth that we are here to serve, but also my team who I know and love, right? And so feeling like really at that crossroads where it's really morally difficult to prioritize the long-term health of an organization over people who I know will be adversely affected by decisions that need to be made today feels awful. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. Akshata. Um, while I feel like most of the arts administrators are also at some point uh, practicing artists and working from home at this point with limited uh, resources, limited space in the city. Um, I have, I'm moving into a new place next week and I just don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh, but it's still on apparently. But apart from that, just making that balance between your personal time and work time and then figuring things out, um, technology and all of that, which has just dawned upon everyone um, a few days back. Um, well, it's it's great to have a great team to work with and be so accommodating. And I, I want to say that a lot of artists and art professionals, although, although they're working on limited budget and funding cuts, have done a great job in the sector to jump in right in the forefront, be making sure um, to do what needs to be done, uh, provide uh, courses, if not in person, online and breaking um, barriers and like coming out of their um, comfort zones and stuff like that, which I feel genuinely artists and art professionals in, in Toronto at least have done a great job so far. Great, thank you. Uh, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I've been particularly stressed with how are we going to recreate that important social element of arts education as a, as a drama and performing arts teacher without being able to connect and see our students. Uh, and echoing what the, the drama teacher from Toronto said, sorry, I forgot your name. Um, there is the equity of access to technology. I mean, I teach approximately 90 students uh, this semester. Uh, we are going to move to some sort of distance education model. Um, and I don't know if I'll be able to connect with every student. And just looking at the logistics of trying, you can't do collaborative creation anymore. Um, so it has to be very, you know, individually driven. Um, it'll be almost impossible from a time standpoint to watch a series of individual performance videos or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, you know, we do have a lot of students that are dealing with mental health challenges and the teachers in our schools have been, you know, a huge point of contact for them. Um, so, of course, I worry about how those students are doing, how they're, they're handling the stress of this situation. I mean, I'm an adult and I find this, you know, frightening and uncomfortable at times. So I can only imagine what a student with, you know, mental health issues, um, how they're coping with it. Uh, and they've lost one of their greatest resources, the connections that they have at school or the connection they have to their particular art form, be it visual arts, instrumental music, dramatic arts, vocal music, media arts, whatever the case may be, that outlet that they could have because they, they don't have access to the materials or the technology for it anymore. So I'm curious, you know, and then arts education, you know, often has a, a tough time getting the focus and attention needed uh, in curriculum. And it's going to be very difficult to do in a way that is authentic on an online form. Um, so I'm also concerned that arts education will be pushed even further back, you know, math, English, science, you know, that can be that can be approached, I, I would feel a little more effectively on an online distance platform, but it's a lot harder to do something that is either creative based or ensemble based or that requires that human connection. So I'm wondering what will happen to the arts will it just be forgotten. A lot of questions, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. Um, Jason. He's muted. Trying to unmute you, Jason, but maybe we're working against each other. There. Is it unmuted? Okay, thank You're you. Okay, thanks. Um, this is like my fourth Zoom call. So, um, so uh, yeah, echoing some of Sorry, Jason, you're, you're muted again. 
I don't know how that happened. I there we go. Understand why that's happening? Okay. There so you go. I, I, we're so fo seemingly so focused on the, um, the economic uh, outcomes of this, the 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 job losses, the how are we all migrating our programming and our communities to these online platforms and whatnot, right? Which is super important and very obvious that we would be doing that at this juncture, but. I'm also really concerned about the longer, the medium to longer term fallout in terms of just the trauma that people are going to be experiencing from this, that just that that's that's deeper and maybe more than the economic uh, fallout. Um, I mean, if anyone's even just been out in the world, like if for a walk, you know, it's a, it's pretty weird out there, right? So this is a pretty like traumatic thing. And I feel like it's going to live with a lot of folks. So how do we get in front of that um, now? I guess is the question. And I'm also kind of like thinking quite a bit about, you know, there's a lot of artist relief kind of funds, emergency funds, emergency. We're scrambling right now and this makes sense. We should be. But um, I also can't help but thinking in the medium to long term, again, where there's great adversity, there might be opportunity as well. So kind of like what Johnny was saying about the, um, like the value or the role of arts education in the future and the arts as a whole, like where, what, how does this pivot our sector and, and where are we going as artists and what is the role of artists as we navigate through and hopefully out of this uh, crisis? Some things I'm thinking about. Thanks, Jason. Pivot, it's a, that's an apropos word, yeah. Uh, Sheena. <clears throat> There you go. Um, yeah, I, I definitely echo a lot of the same things that Johnny was saying. Um, I also am, you know, very struck at the moment by how incredibly important and sustaining the arts are to everybody, like all the free concerts that are happening on Instagram and Facebook and like just the, the, the fact that people are sort of surviving by watching films and, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm very struck by that. But it's also a lot of it is happening for free. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just think that as artists, we're often, uh, like our work is not valued in general and, um, my personal hope is that this is a moment where maybe people actually see the significance of artists in terms of society, but I, I, like the artists that work for, for Kickstart Arts are so vulnerable and I'm so concerned and worried about that and feel like such a responsibility because all of the projects that we've had where they have contracts that are supposed to happen, you know, into next year, uh, like right now, everything has just evaporated. And um, so I'm just like feeling the weight of that, I think. Yeah, thank you, Sheena. Um, JJ. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I really empathize with everyone's sentiments that have been shared so far. And as someone who, who works in an organization that uh, prioritizes um, addressing mental health issues, especially through combating social isolation, um, it's been really challenging and kind of reaching out to people on all fronts. Um, but some of the things that uh, we are thinking of and I think that um, are important things for maybe all people and who, who are arts workers and artists to consider too is that you know even having a um, you know a scenario like this where we can come together and discuss things and really um, share the resources that we do have and um, you know even having like this moment of like you know, shared empathy and compassion for each other is really um, what is fueling I think a lot of people right now with being able to um, pull together and move forward. Um, I just wanted to say that um, to Jason's concern of uh, like you know effects of, of in the long term of uh, trauma being something that is definitely uh, very real. Um, funny enough uh, Last week, uh, my organization was supposed to put on a, a free debrief circle for artists and art workers, um, people who don't have a chance to necessarily um, kind of review maybe situations that were based on conflict and, and trauma of the past and having a chance to come together in an arts um, related space to do that. However, um, it kind of gives me, um, you know, some, some ideas to, to also move forward with um, our programming that um, we can share with, with um, you know, partner organizations and, and all of you. So I think um, I'll be taking notes quite a bit throughout this conversation and brainstorming ways in which, you know, um, discussion groups can maybe be initiated to help people continue to, you know, like um, 
untangle these these very uh, real difficult emotions and feelings. Great, thank you, thank you. And uh, some people are having trouble with the raise hand, but if you pull, pull up your participants tab on the right hand side, it should be kind of at the bottom under um, all the names of the people here. But if you're having trouble, just, you know, you can do it the lo-fi way. Um, Diane. Sorry, can you just tell us how to un, um, message all as well? I can't figure that out either. Message all, there's a drop down box in the chat and message all, I believe it should be the very top one, top option, scroll all the way up. <clears throat> should be there. Everyone in meeting, it just says everyone in meeting. Um, yeah, let me know. No? <laughs> um, Diane. Yeah, um, similar comments to everybody else. I guess, you know, working from home, um, we, I've got lots of work to do, projects that I don't often have an opportunity to get to. I'm now able to work on them. But the challenging thing is that I work at a site with dedicated studios. So, you know, of course I can do things at home, but it's actually the physical on-site space that um, the patrons love and, and flock to in order to get these cultural experiences. So, you know, even if we were able to, at the municipality town of Oakville, if we were able to get these um, other kinds of experiences online, which would be which would be great. We're still losing that whole experience and those great spaces with all of the resources that we have and the equipment and the materials, um, which was the purpose of the space, having it, you know, uh, open, built and opened up eight years ago when that happened. So it's. I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the value of that space and the importance of that space and keeping it going and what will happen when we finally uh, are able to get back to it, if people are going to feel comfortable coming back to those spaces and gathering in groups once again. So that's one, that's one thing that's on my mind. The other thing that's on my mind is, uh, Tanya mentioned this as well, my coworker, um, it's challenging when you're working at a municipality where we don't, we're not a small arts organization where we have control over those digital resources. So a lot of the things that we would love to do quickly have to go through a lot of stages and meetings and decisions and um, to get everybody coordinated. And it's necessary to do that. Um, but I think in the arts, we're so used to having this, like an immediacy or, uh, you know, ways of dealing with things because as artists, we've had to all along, being an artist myself, um, we've had to figure things out quickly, um, on the fly, et cetera. But working in a different environment where things are more hierarchical, we lose that kind of um, immediacy. So I think the town, is all currently working on that and um, trying to figure out how we can how we can reach out to people. Thank you, Diane. And Sheila. I just wanted to share what's happening um, at the secondary level. Um, my school board is the Toronto Catholic Board and just today they um, put up a portal for students to access materials um, but the arts materials are there. You can see understandably it's been a rush to put them together, but uh, there's that and as well as what the ministry brought out about the TVO links. Um, my reaction is just it's the arts aren't really present and what is that communicating to our students? Um, you find I find I even often have to remind um, the board about its, its STEAM, not STEM, as the ministry also um, in its funding models uh, is committed to what has long been an outdated practice and the arts are included in, in STEAM education. So on a larger systemic level, um, the arts are have in this quick reboot are falling by the wayside. That's a, one of the things that's making me anxious. Thank you, Sheila. Helena. Uh, can everybody hear me? You're, you're low, but give it a try. Let me move the phone a little bit closer. Can you hear me? 
Uh, we can hear you. It's, it's not loud, but. Uh, All right, how about this? Perfect. <laughs> okay. So uh, Larry uh, asked us to talk about how this has affected us personally and, uh, and everybody still um, speaking about the effects on their, on their organization. I feel like I'm a bit self-absorbed, but I think I will take uh, Larry's suggestion. And, and personally, I um, have always been a very practical and work-focused person, and um, I'm finding that um, like it, pretty much through the day I can, you know, kind of be practical and get things done. But near the end of every day, I kind of feel this overwhelming despair and fear. And, and then the next day, it feels a little better. But then towards the end of the day, uh, you know, it, uh, and uh, so much of this is, is new for all of us. Um, and that's uh, scary too. How are we going to make this work in ways that we haven't tried before or, or, or use more of the things we just tried from time to time? And, and uh, wonderful to, uh, like I do feel like everybody's, everybody is so in touch with our connectedness as, as, as human beings and that's really lovely. Um, but it sure feels like there's just a big scary thing that is... Uh, maybe going to get me and that just feels terrible when I feel terrible about it and the rest of the time I can sort of not think about it. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Helena. Hard, hard to not think about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Did anybody else have anything or Larry we'll move on to the next question? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. unmuted. I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jennifer. Wow. So there, there are all these different uh, realities that are, are happening to, to you folks out there, which we've heard. I mean, each one of these, well, this is the fifth conversation that, that we have had across the country. And many of these um, same issues come up, but also in each instance, different things come up. And because here now we have the GTA, there's a kind of a I don't know, a, a coherence of what some of the issues are. Um, I'd like to get into the brainstorming part now in terms of what, what kinds of things, and you, I know there's overlap in this conversation, so some of you already mentioned things, but um, this is an opportunity to focus on um, what, what have you tried? And what, you know, it, it sounds like digital is you know, where everyone is looking, but are, are there other points of contact as well? And, uh, and then, um, what, or what have you heard of? What do you know that somebody else tried that you haven't tried it yourself yet? And what kind of success have you been having? Great, thanks, Sheena. So I, from my perspective, like I am not an expert on doing things digitally by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, Kickstart Arts kind of is me running things like there's not a staff I don't have a salary like it's done kind of on a project to project grant by grant basis so like what would be super helpful to me is to know um, number one is there funding to help us kind of get stuff like this off the ground and number two how do we get support who would be good to talk to about this kind of thing like I'm obviously reaching out to the people that I know but <clears throat> we're as other people have said like we're really focused on connection and community building and face-to-face -face work and this has not never been a priority for us particularly so i'm really scrambling to try and figure it out mm -hmm. does anyone have any response to sheena on that can jump in or what other digital platforms are people using um there's been some some talk obviously a lot of people are trying to use zoom has anyone had any success uh with any of the platforms that they've been using yes amy yeah so this is something um that our drama school director uh thought of that was kind of fun and um our education department is kind of all got on board with this but we're trying this new thing called inside with our imagination so uh we're a theater company and we work with young people um, and so we've just been throwing together two minute videos of drama games that you can play with your family when you're inside. Um, just for a way to keep engaged um, and we find that's, that's getting a little bit of traction. So I'll put a link, um, you guys can check it out, but really it's very lo-fi. Staff are literally using like their laptops or their phones to film um, games with their families 
um, it's kind of working out uh, in a fun way. So I thought I'd offer that. Great, thanks. Tanya. Hi, um, uh, what I found interesting is even though our department can't do much at the moment, uh, digitally, but our library services are offering a lot of really interesting um, opportunities because they have more direct access to their platforms. And so they're doing story time reading at 10 o'clock live on a Facebook or an Instagram platform. They have a lot of uh, services through video and audio books. Um, there are video services they've opened up so that you can take out more than 10 videos. Um, so I, I look to them and we're also talking with the library because it's possible that we will be doing some joint programming. We have some ideas to um, do some programming in our parks areas, even though um, we're trying to really control the groups that are going out into the parks. But in Oakville, we have a lot of really great trail systems here. So we're thinking of some um, programming that could activate small groups or families to go out on walks and do things creatively. Um, recently on the weekend, I um, participated in choir, choir, choir here in Toronto. Um, two guys that are sitting on their couch singing songs. And it was pretty amazing to be part of that experience. I don't know if anyone else did it, but um, as, as, you know, um, unsettling these times are, there was an hour or two where I had a lot of, I had a really good time just laughing on my couch and being silly with them. So there's a lot that I would like to do because I find that these resources are really important in the times that we're in. And as creative people, we're, we seem to respond to this as well, very directly, and, and it's inspiring. Great. Thanks, Tanya. Um, Jessica. Um, so some of the things that we've done to sort of get people a bit excited about um, uh, registering for the spring semester was um, uh, micro teaches. So I just asked the instructors that we work with if anyone was interested in providing like a, you know, one to five minute micro teach, which could be, which could be a prompt, like a very kind of do it yourself, you know, like low production value kind of a lesson on your phone, or even just sort of some sort of um, creative uh, yeah, prompt for writing or for creating music. And those have been nice to share also. Um, some instructors have initiated um, studio visits and critiques. So they set up like a day online where people can, you know, all join in via Zoom and take a look at, you know, what, what people are doing. It could be a form of like, it's almost like a, a casual critique studio visit um, that uh, it's, it's, it's nice for people to get in touch with. And um, also uh, we are, going to try using and I haven't tested this completely yet with like with uh, through my own practice but um, this program called Wiz IQ which is it is something you have to pay for I think it's uh, there is an annual payment plan I can't remember how much it is but it is more set up for a traditional classroom learning environment so I think um, for you for for those of you who are used to um, uh, classroom teaching in a school They've got like a whiteboard option, a library option, where you can have all your PDFs and resources and links um, on there and connect it with your students. And um, there's, you can put up like a PowerPoint and have a PowerPoint uh, presentation playing at the same time while you're walking people through the tutorial. Um, it's less intuitive than Zoom. Um, for lo-fi options for those of, uh, for people I work with who are offline, um, we've just been using the phone. <laughs> so uh, the nice thing about Zoom, the accessible option is that people can join through a phone and they can still um, participate in dialoguing. In this case, there was a poetry class where they did workshopping with one another and that was through an audio source. So, um, and then I've been a big proponent of getting some mail art going. So <laughs> old fashioned stamp paper, you know, packaging material and um, also doing some micro teaches of like, how to use uh, stuff in your kitchen to paint with. Um, so really I'm trying to extract from all areas, uh, both analog and digital. Wow, that's interesting. It's the first time mail has come up in one of these conversations. I like it. <laughs> um, Diane. Um, I don't think I had my hand up. Oh, oh, sorry. It was 
maybe by accident. Uh, Johnny. <clears throat> Our school board has a board-wide license for an education platform called Edsby. So it's a, it's a learning management software uh, sort of system. Um, so we've been slowly trying to compile resources and materials. Uh, the problem is it's not like Zoom. You can't interact in real time. It's essentially a repository of sorts where you can, you know, you can post videos or links or PowerPoint or files or PDFs. Um, so what we're trying to do as a board without having to look at, you know, buy, do we buy licenses for Zoom for everyone? I mean, the free Zoom allows 40 minutes up to 100 people and then you're kicked out. Um, so we're struggling with how do we sort of get that real time connection um, in, in the moment where we all can, you know, share an experience together, a creative experience together. And, and we're struggling with how do we how do we do that for all the arts? Um, and then some colleagues, I reached out to colleagues and friends before this meeting and I said, well, what are some of your concerns or what are some of the things you've tried? Uh, and people are concerned about the lag with Zoom. I mean, you know, not everyone has the same uh, internet connection. So trying to, you know, do voice lessons uh, or play an instrument together, there are some issues with lag and everything syncing up appropriately. Uh, and then someone brought up the concept of sort of your creative brain essentially being hijacked by this crisis, uh, where a lot of people are having troubles really thinking creatively. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, you're home, you're stuck inside, you can write, you can play your instrument, you can draw. A lot of people are very preoccupied uh, with the fear surrounding this COVID-19 crisis that they can't even begin to imagine, well, do, do I create now? Like, do I take joy from this? Or, or how do I take joy from this during this difficult time? So it's trying to figure out how to balance the reality of the situation with, you know, the desire to continue to create, learn, and perform. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard so many people say, wow, you've got all sorts of free time now to be an artist, but um, there are many, many people who don't, especially there have been people in these conversations talking about having small children home all day and not being able, there's many reasons, not just uh, <clears throat> the mental health ones as well. Does anyone else have any other, uh, um, yeah, Karen, or sorry, Lippert Music. Charlene. Charlene, um, I know Karen yeah. Lippert, so that's why I was there. It's okay, no, no <laughs> problem. Um, if you know a Karen, it might be really, she might be related to me. <laughs> Uh, so we've been using Google Hangouts for our, our lessons before we started, um, before we knew anything about the Zoom lessons or anything like that. We have a music service and there's some incredible things out there where um, there's a service called My Music Staff that is a studio, um, a studio um, online service that helps you with every aspect of running your school including they've include they've started a zoom service so it makes it easier for teachers to use um, if you want to go that route we did it the old-fashioned way um, because i'm a bit of a dinosaur but um, the google hangouts has been a great thing As somebody was talking about lag and and uh, teaching lessons online and things like that uh, what we found for teaching voice lessons and things like that if somebody needs a track to sing with uh, if you put their tracks up on Dropbox, um, the student could be in charge of turning those on and off, and that way there's no lag. So the teacher's just hearing what the student is performing with the accompaniment. We have had issue, though, with maintenance of instruments. So for small children, we can't tune their instruments because we're not there. Um, and then we've had strings break and all of that, so we're working through getting that happening. And I wanted to speak a little bit to um, gigs being canceled. I work with 35 professional musicians who have had all of that work dry up for them for the next six months. Um, but there have been some places that have actually paid them for uh, the rehearsals they've already done, which has been fantastic. But I'm worried for the other end. When, there, when are we going to reschedule all these concerts? Because uh, are we going to like cancel future concerts um, and then put these in their place because then the artists will still be penalized. They've already lost uh, concerts for this year. So I don't know how we're going to help them. Hopefully the government subsidies will help. Um, and then just uh, the problem of people gathering in groups. I think we're going to have to be creative and give some kind of incentive 
for people to gather in groups again. So for example, Diane was talking about your art space, you know, can you put food on? It's a wonderful way to get people to come. Could you have a, a teasers in an Instagram program and saying, here, take a look at um, a different piece of art every day. And uh, then at the end of this, say, come and see the actual art. And, you know, can you identify where this is, have some kind of contest in the gallery? Um, that might be a really neat way to, to get people to come and see it for real. Um, and then when you're talking about the schools, this might be a real opportunity for arts and music programs in the schools that have been so neglected for so long. I used to be a TDSB music teacher um, back in the early 90s and my music school got even busier. We've been in existence since 1957. But through arts, I hope that they can learn to re-socialize the students who have been in isolation for so long. So this might be the time and place for us to put pressure on the government to make sure that the arts and music programs are reinstated in schools. We have so many artists that the whole industry has been flooded with so many talented people. And it would be good to get these people, if they need to be certified, have some kind of crash course, get them all in the schools, get them employed, and through arts, socialize our students once again. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Great, thank you. Yeah, Jason. Um, <clears throat> thanks. So it sounds like there's, and it, it really seems like there's a plethora of different platforms and really creative um, online approaches to migrating programming, be it music lessons or the, the drama lessons and, um, or the micro teaches, I really like that, um, to these different platforms or just really simple ways of disseminating information and cultural uh, knowledge uh, through, you know, pretty accessible avenues, I suppose. Um, it sounds to me in this case that, and I would have, I kind of want to get folks feeling about this. We could follow up individually after, of course. Um, it sounds like there would be great need for added funding and capacity for all of our organizations to either purchase new software or integrate new software in our programming, depending on how long this thing goes on for, of course. Um, but even something like Zoom, it's pretty expensive if you want to get the most of it, right? A lot of our groups can't afford that. So I would imagine that that might be an area of funding that we should be looking at uh, from, from uh, public government funding. Um, but to add to that, I'm wondering if anybody's been facing faced with this scenario so far. It's, it's great that there's so much stuff happening online. However, we also know that the internet, unfortunately, it's, it's not a right now, and a lot of folks don't have it. Um, if they do, it's, it's not, some folks do have the internet, but it's really slow. I'm thinking of our, um, of our artists in Northern communities, remote communities where there's very spotty internet. And also that has to go along with the device that can actually process a certain, you know, kind of bandwidth. And we're, we're all able to do this uh, Zoom today, but I mean, sometimes people are using just an old cell phone and that's their only kind of portal to the world, right? So I'm wondering if folks have had that experience, like, you know, with any participants or any of their students saying, Oh, great. Everybody can participate in this activity except for Jason, who doesn't have the internet or has such a weak, uh, small package that they're, he's unable to get into the programming kind of thing. Um, also, how we should look at that, addressing that as a sector. I know that's not a question that we're going to all unpack here, but it's, it's that it brings to mind those questions. And I would love to follow up individually with uh, folks after if there are thoughts about that, any of those things. Thank you, Jason. Um, <clears throat> I do know that um, we attended a conference not that long ago. It was actually a, a tech conference, and they're talking about the um, <clears throat> the government of Canada has kind of called Wi-Fi as a human right or access to information. So they're working on having every single Canadian have have Wi-Fi or have access by 2027. I think that was the the year. But again, that doesn't necessarily speak as you're saying to the uh, the hardware for it. And that's, yeah, you, you're right, it's a while away. Um, Akshata. Hi there. Um, 
we at Artsitobiko, we were just lucky enough to have got a new website. We've been working on it since last year, uh, but that just made us open to another opportunity where our website designers um, proposed to do an online um, interactive um, gallery, um, which is, um, sorry, my battery is just running down. Um, which is a um, 3D model of our existing physical gallery. And we, we just happened to do the juried art show install on the day of the shutdown was announced uh, and take some pictures. And those pictures will now be used on that 3D gallery model where people will be able to go online on our website and check out the show. Um, we, we're not sure if this could be done for all the shows that we do, um, since there are some challenges, technical and physical both, um, to get that done. Uh, but that's one area that all the galleries in the future could look at. I'm sure there'll be more stuff coming in post this whole uh, crazy COVID phase, but, um, and more opportunity for the online um, showcasing of the artworks or online galleries, which already exists, but are not so accessible or um, accessible in ways of like, they're so expensive to ha afford for like not-for-profit or like, even private galleries. Um, there are also ways where uh, there's something called Be the Curator. So for the Jury Dark Show, we received 250 submissions, but not all that selected, obviously. The only few made in. But with this interactive project, everyone who visits um, the online gallery will be able to curate their own show um, as they would be able to select and drag and see what what they would have liked to see um, apart from uh, what what got selected by the jurors. Um, so that is where I feel the accessibility has gone beyond just local arts community, whereas anyone online could access that. But on the other end, when we are running online classes, we like online classes on Zoom especially, we have to limit it to 12 or 15 kids uh, and we have like 100 kids enrolled otherwise um, who would be on wait list for now. And we don't really have enough funds to be able to pay more instructors to do more than one or two classes at this point. So there's that thing as well. Like even with the online, how much do you do? Like where do you stop and how, how much do you serve? Um, so that's kind of tricky and challenging even when you're able to do it or when you, even when you have all, all the online resources, it's kind of tricky. Um, and that's something that we are facing at this point, even when uh, we have online resources and have setups and Zoom and everything. Um, it's, it's that question of like, how much do you do? Um, yeah. Right, right, thank you. Um, Sheena. Uh, so two responses. Um, first of all, just in terms of what Jason was saying, like, I, I would really echo that in terms of the community of, of working in Regent Park. A lot of people have phones, but they don't probably have computers. So doing something like this would be really hard for them. Um, and but then, uh, sorry, is it Diane from Lippert Music? Charlene. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I also think that 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 we should be thinking about that in terms of like, you know, this is, is not, it's going, might go on for months, but it's not going to go on forever. And I think we do really need to be thinking about the role that all of us can play in terms of people coming back together again. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm thinking about that in regards to school projects, right? And there are organizations like Kickstart Arts that do projects in schools. But, but before this all happened, we were already at capacity in terms of the artists that we have um, that can actually go in and do those projects. So like, is there a way that we could be thinking about that? And is there a funding that we could be using to like work with artists now to help them prep for something like that? Because I think there is a lot of need and there obviously, there's more than our organization obviously that does work in schools, but um, like, how do we support that? And how do we think about that and plan for that as well? Because I personally think we're gonna have a really vital role as artists in terms of, of unpacking all of this, right, for people. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Diane, you have your hand raised. My my question was for Akshata regarding. I, I was just interested in what program you're using when you um, record the gallery space. Is it a specific program, or is it simply 
uh, the program that you mentioned, Be the Curator? So it's uh, through our website developers and designers who um, provided us with the existing model that they had for our juried art show. We are doing it for the first time. Uh, we are releasing on it on 1st of April, still uh, working on it. Like we, will, we are asking the artists uh, to send us a recorded video, which would be linked to their specific work. And when you go in on the screen, you click on the work, you'll be able to see all the details as to artist names, uh, work details, description um, and the video if uh, it's linked um, but this is something which is uh, designed or like custom customized right. uh, specifically with our website at this point but I'm sure there are other resources which you could link to your existing website as well mm -hmm. or even do a 3d model and then have a 360 video uh, of your physical space and then include that on your uh, website mm -hmm. where viewers could just walk into your space virtually yeah um yeah i'm, okay. I'm still exploring i don't really have uh, the exact answer to your question but i'm still exploring this whole new um world out there that's that's great. I'll do a little bit of research. I just thought maybe there was one specific program, right. but it sounds like it's tailored to your organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, I don't, Larry, do you want to move on to the next question then? Looks like we don't yeah, have thank, any thank you. Well, several of you have, have led us in, I mean, um, um, to the next question. So what, what we've been talking about, I think, mainly, or the the thrust of my question was, what are you doing in spite of or to overcome this, um, the limitations of the, of, the, of the virus? Now, but what, I, what I'm really interested in, and several of you alluded to it one way or another, is using the arts to help alleviate what people are going through. In other words, directing your work towards the current situation. And um, we've, we've heard some talk about some very excellent ideas about what do we do in the future, but are you doing something now or are you envision, envisioning something uh, specific that we could, uh, could think about um, for, for the afterward period? Yes, Johnny. So Larry, your question, uh, Larry, your question was like, what are we envisioning for after the crisis? Or now, or now. like in other words, are okay. you doing something now? And I know everybody's struggling with how do we even just do anything, right? But, but have you been giving some thought to how the work you're doing or how you could do some work that would, would benefit the community with regard to this particular issue? Yeah. Um, we all are. I mean, I'm sure we're all looking at sort of the, I think universally, I think the, the themes I'm going to choose to explore once, once my classes resume online are the themes of, you know, hope, community, health, healing, those, those things. So sort of explore um, how do we reconnect and how do we rediscover, you know, what it means to be a social human in times of isolation. Um, as far as looking at what happens after the crisis is over, uh, I don't know about you personally, I'm finding it a little more challenging because I don't know when that will be and I don't quite know what the world will look like at the end of that and that, that's creating some uncertainty now now that that area of uncertainty could be you know ripe for creativity and you know exploring what that could be uh, but it could also be scary and unsettling for for students as well and I'm, I'm working with high school students so I don't necessarily want to trigger anything or put them in an uncomfortable position um, and again, yeah, we're, we're just sort of looking at, well, how do we bring our community together, uh, even though we're not together? And I do want to compliment a, a co-worker uh, at my current school, uh, sent an email out to all the teachers saying, hey, why don't you send me a little clip, uh, and then we'll put something together to share to the entire school community. So our school, uh, several teachers on staff sent him a 20-second clip saying, hey, we're thinking of you. Uh, we miss you, our students. We miss being in our classes. And uh, that video is on YouTube, I can post a link as well. So that's sort of been our community's first step is sort of as an entire staff showing we're together, we're still here, we care, you can reach out to us. And we look forward to, you know, a new learning environment where we can connect regularly come April 6th. Uh, but again, there's still a lot of uncertainty on what that will look like and how that will unfold. Uh, but I think 
I, I know from my vantage point, I'm looking at focusing more on things like hope and, and community and togetherness uh, in the creative projects we're going to pursue when we when we get back to school. Right, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Ekshata. Um, what we as an organization have tried doing is to reach out to our sponsors and donors and um, just follow up with them. Um, I know this is a difficult time to make any kind of ask, uh, but it doesn't hurt to just inform them of all the work that you're doing uh, or anything that you're going through as an organization. Um, and we did kind of a do soft ask and we did end up getting some donation that goes straight into paying our artists, facilitators. Um, so that really helped us. Uh, um, so we hesitate at times to ask, but I think it doesn't hurt to ask. It's never a bad time to ask. Uh, you never know who's there to help you in such times. That's very true. Sheena. Uh, honestly, just sort of human to human stuff. <laughs> like well, I've tried to do two things. Uh, number one, just uh, try and be someone that can filter information and, and get that to the artists that are on our roster. Um, so I did things like reach out to my MP, reach out to my city councilor, have direct conversations with people that would um, really have like information and specific dates and links and that sort of thing. And then just be the person that's sending that out to the artists that are on our roster. And then in terms of the youth that we work with in Regent Park, um, we're actually, uh, continuing to work on some writing. We have a collaborative film, like a theater, theater, forum theater film project, a web series that we've created with youth in that community. So um, I'm trying to give them things to do still. And we're doing things like using Zoom and we have a WhatsApp group that goes and, but honestly, like more than anything, really we're, I'm, I'm just trying to check on them and let them know that if they need to talk to someone, I'm here. Um, so at this point, it's really just about that, that piece. And I feel like I'm starting to kind of catch my breath a bit now and look at other things at this point. Great, thank you. Yes, Jason. Uh, one thing that we're noticing um, with the work that I do with Q, and, and to be clear, Q is an organization that provides funding and mentorship and a bunch of other opportunities for young artists who live and work on the margins and face systemic barriers. So we know that, um, the federal government has announced all these funding packages and, and aid packages that are to be coming soon. I'm like cautiously optimistic about this. Of course, like I'm, we'll see what the guidelines look like. We'll see what the caveats look like, you know. Um, but even under the best circumstances um, <clears throat> and, the, and the most simplified process with those funds, it occurs to me uh, in no small way that there's many folks who are going to need some kind of support to access those funds. So I've been told um, by Adam Vaughn, actually, that those funds are all going to be, I think it's announced now that everything's streaming through CRA. So all of the, anyone wanting to access those emergency funds needs to have their taxes up to date and their CRA profiles up to date as soon as possible to avoid any complications, which is fine for a lot of folks, but not fine for folks who are so disenfranchised from the tax system, for um, folks who don't have uh, their banking uh, information up to date. I'm thinking of our of our uh, trans communities who uh, so often have ID issues and banking issues kind of thing, right? So um, yeah, so it occurs to me that, you know, there's, I see a lot of relief funds and everyone's fundraising and, and trying to move around uh, small to medium sized amounts of money, which is fantastic. But I think we will also need, and this is something I'm trying to work with our communities with, is just how we can work with folks in a remote way too, to actually access the, that, that government support if it's filling out the form, getting their taxes filed or whatever other kinds of federal government type of paperwork is gonna be necessary. And I'd love if anyone has ideas or if has also faced that, or I just, I would love any ideas on that, frankly too. Thank you. That's a good point. And apparently the CRA is really understaffed right now as a lot of them are not working. That's what I, <clears throat> and a million IE uh, applications last week. So, uh, Diane. 
Um, yeah, just a comment um, to what Sheila said about um, sharing information with her staff. Uh, where I work, I have about 15 technicians and they look after the specialized studio spaces. So they are um, the specialists, you, you know, the clay technician, the wood technician, et cetera. Um, and then I have a roster of about 20 instructors, 25 instructors, and I worry about all of them. So, you know, going back to the first question, like how, or one of the questions, how are we doing? Um, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones, um, but I worry about all of those, um, like my, uh, my team of people. And so every four days or so, I'm sending them like, an email with an update, how we're doing, any inf information I might have, but they're short emails, they're very upbeat. Um, they've got, you know, little funny things in there or clip art or something like that, because I know that um, I can't run, you know, my part of the facility without them. And they're the ones who are the most vulnerable at this point. So um, as my uh, colleague Tanya mentioned, we are paying them up until uh, April 6th. So we are, again, one of the lucky organizations that is able to do that. And after that, I'm just hoping that we will be, you know, working our way back to things so that these um, artists of all backgrounds and ages can come back and be gainfully employed once again. So that communication piece right now is what I'm offering to them as a way of support. Um, and then lots of, you know, texting, um, Instagram groups, that kind of thing, just with them, just to keep them upbeat. Um, and we, you know, want that we need their expertise. We want them to come back. But right now they're you know, they're living on what we've provided. And until we know what's going to happen after April 6th, we're just not sure, you know, what, um, how we'll be able to support them after that. Right. Um, <clears throat> so we as a network are obviously hosting these roundtable discussions. Um, uh, I don't know if everyone saw the page. We've sent it out on a couple of emails too. We have a list of resources and we continue to um, to grow them um, as they change and develop and more get added. I don't know if Caitlin, Caitlin is the one who's compiling it all. If you want to talk a little bit about it and post the link and whatnot. I know there are a few. <clears throat> I'm posting a link right now to the resource page that we have on our website. Um, so the resource page, it includes some information about funding, um, speaking specifically to Jason's question about more marginalized folks. You probably know this already, but um, Glad Day Bookshop has a fund. Okay, you do know about that, yeah. Um, but, and there's other funding for specific arts disciplines listed on that link that I just shared with everyone. Um, there's also like skill sharing websites, uh, mostly free ones where you can go for like ideas yourself occupied kids occupied um yeah and there's also some breakdowns by province and city if anyone is looking for a specific to see where they are um, and if you have any resources to share with me everything that you've already included in the chat i've updated the page already with it probably uh, but if you have anything else that you want to email me about after this is all done please let me know and i'll include it on the page yeah. oh, i'll let i'll put my email on there right now yeah, these chats have been incredible for us. We're learning so much more and, and happily sharing with the rest of the country. Um, Amy. Thanks. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share too that um, I'm on the board for something called Payoni. Some of you folks may know about it, uh, the Professional Arts Organizations Network for Education. Um, and so we also are starting to compile a list of resources. So I'm happy to include that in the chat as well. There's a lot of um, resources in there that are relating to um, like relief funds for artists that we work with um, and things like that. So I'll include the link. There's also a survey that if you have other resources, feel free to um, fill that out and it'll automatically populate that list of resources as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, Sheena. <clears throat> um, for those of you that are in Toronto, like I'm certainly finding that Toronto Arts Council is extremely impressive. Um, they're very responsive. The first email I got 
I, they sent out an email with information a week before any of the other arts organizations did. Um, and they're, they're very quick to respond. And if you haven't seen it already, they actually have um, uh, a fund that artists, and they don't have to be Toronto Arts Council artists necessarily, can apply for, um, for lost work. Uh, up to a thousand dollars so if you don't if you know people that that might be helpful to you that would be something that would be great to share um yeah just for what it's worth great yeah yeah <clears throat> if anyone else has anything to add there otherwise um larry if you want to you can okay well thank you very much um we have the final thing we want to ask you um is is really what what do you think that th an organization like ours which has a national focus um but is really trying to trying to keep our um ear to the ground with uh, with what's happening what is what would you suggest that we could do further and uh, keeping in mind we're not the government we don't have you know 115 billion dollars to spend on things but we are a little team and we we have this kind of focus, and we're trying to and we have this this digital grant, so we're trying to bring everything together to help people as much as we can. So, any suggestions about what you think we could do to help alleviate the situation for you or the people you work with or work work for, and so on? Uh, yes, Akshata. I I personally believe, and I'm I'm sure most of us here would agree that the whole work culture would change post COVID situation uh, and the whole idea around how we work or how we look at work in general would change. Um, although this online and the virtual world did exist, uh, I myself, I did not explore it as much as I am doing now um, and pushing beyond my comfort zones and has led me to learn certain skills which I would have not otherwise even um, considered. Uh, but I still think there's so much more to learn and I think um, it will all depend on how quick the whole arts scene or like arts uh, organizations and cultural organizations would adapt to that change. Um, they've already started to, uh, but it still needs a lot more uh, learning and understanding of the technology and the access to it. Some of the softwares and programs are free, but uh, a lot of us are not aware uh, or we have no resources um, to go and look for. Uh, so maybe something on those lines, if you guys could provide or work on those educational aspect of teaching those skills or learning of those um, um, technical, um, I don't know how to say that, but just the understanding of this whole new work, work culture that would just come up post a situation. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. I think with the digital the digital strategy grant that the Canada Council had uh, launched and that we're working on right now, you know, they they are trying to get everybody to think digital, and now of course everybody's hands are being forced in that direction. So um, <clears throat> so we're trying to be as responsive as possible and uh, trying to help everybody out as much as we possibly can. So. Um, mm -hmm. And we will be sending a post uh, discussion survey. So if you think of anything in the interim, uh, there will be a question, you know, what else can we do? So please feel free to add to that as well. Sure. Yes. Thank you so much. Charlene. Yeah. I, I just had one thing to add. The government could help by reinstituting the child uh, tax credit for the arts. There was a there was a government uh, program that got slashed abruptly, where um, parents could write off five hundred dollars of um, tuition that they paid to the arts, and that would just encourage people to go privately again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that is actually um, I think Larry did mention that, but at the end of all of this, with the research, we're both writing reports, but also writing letters and doing some advocacy of our of our own. Once we hear from from people across the country. Yes, yeah, Sheena. So two things. Number one, um, uh, I'm curious to hear if there's anything that we haven't talked about that you've been hearing in other parts of the country that you think would be important for us to be thinking about as well. 
And, um, and just also number two, just an acknowledgement of what you guys are doing. And thank you so much, because it, it really does make, um, it, it helps me a lot to feel like there are, I have a community that I can talk to right now. Great, our pleasure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as Larry said, uh, and Larry, I don't know if you want to add in anything on this, but um, every, every discussion has been so very different. So, uh, for instance, in Manitoba, yesterday we were talking, there was a lot of the term silver lining kept coming up. Everybody was very positive about all these new things and it's going to help them into the future. And, and, um, and in Saskatchewan, there's, you know, there's some artist educators that are busier than they've ever been because they're doing everything online and, and they're completely full now and, and they can offer them at so many different times. And, uh, and but then of course there's um, um, a lot of what we've been talking about here today the uh the mental health aspects of all of this um and larry is there anything else that's really stuck out to you as far as what's been said across the country yeah um first of all we are i mean um um we will be and lisa will be preparing a report in which these ideas and all of the ideas from across the country will be compiled so that hopefully hopefully should be helpful um, also, we are we have recorded these, and we are going to um, like everybody. Our staff is hugely overworked, but uh, we're trying to do this. This is sort of our project for now. But we do, we are going to put, we are going to post all of the conversations. So you might be able to taste some of the different. Well, that necessarily you could watch them all, but I'm just thinking you could dip into that's what what's been talked about in the different parts of the country. And some of them align very much with what you're saying, and some of them. Um, as Jennifer said, yesterday was sort of a happy day, <laughs> very positive looking, but on previous days we've had people in tears mm -hmm. you know, because of what's happening to them. So um, yeah, we, we're trying to share everything and we will, we will, when it's possible, we will post these. Maybe after the first round. We, there's, we've also been asked, would we, could we host more of them, uh, more of these? And that would be a possibility as well. But again, keeping in mind that it's only us, <laughs> and so we can only we can do so much. So we'll get through the first round, see where we are, make our report, and um, have all of these posted, and then we'll see if there's a way that we can reinstitute something, or, or is there a need for this, or is there a need for something else, right? Because that will be a couple of weeks down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but they will be uh, posted hopefully very soon. But. Um, but yes, I think everyone, uh, does anyone have anything to finish off with? <clears throat> well, I think it's, it's exactly an hour and a half. So uh, thank you so much everyone for, for coming out and taking part and, and, and uh, sharing. Um, I'm, this, uh, we will be sending you, of course, this particular recording in, via email, and you will have a chance to look at the chat. The chat will be on there, so any links that you weren't able to get right now, or if you want to be reminded. But um, but yeah, we'll be sending that out soon along with the survey. So, but in the meantime, thank you everybody very yeah, much. It was really great talking to you. Yes, thank Thanks you, so everyone. Well. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care. Yeah, keep well. You too. Bye.